بعد after we just identify where the angle then we need to look at certain points first we need to have a, an idea about the iris contour the most preferred part of the iris it can be slightly convex can be very convex it can be flat or can be concave slightly convex iris is the normal you get the most peripheral part of the iris slightly convex flat iris you can see it in two cases in cases of big sized eye myopia or aphakia when the lens is not there and also the flat iris flat peripheral iris you can see in cases of plateau iris Plateau iris is a condition where the ciliary processes are thickened, enlarged, and pushing the peripheral part of the iris forward, and you get an occluded angle. The difference between the myopia or the aphakia and the plateau iris, here you get the iris drawn back, and the angle is widely opened. But in cases of plateau iris you get the ciliary body pushing the iris forward so the iris is seen at the level of the trabecular meshwork or Schwalbe's line in cases of myopia or aphakia you can see the trabecular meshwork nicely but in cases of plateau iris the iris is pushed forward and you don't see the angle the angle is closed a concave iris you can see it in cases of pigment dispersion syndrome and pigmentary glaucoma. In this UBM, you can see that the peripheral part of the iris is concave. On the slit lamp, you can see that the central part of the iris is more pushed compared to the peripheral part of the iris. We can watch this video. And you notice that the central area of the iris is pushed more forward compared to the peripheral part. This is the concave appearance of the iris in cases of pigment dispersion syndrome. And if the tension is high, we call it pigmentary glaucoma. So the first point is to have a comment on the iris contour. The second is to see the width of the angle, the distance between the most peripheral part of the iris and the Schwalbe's line. How many degrees could be this angle? Then you see the structure visible in the angle. In this drawing, here you can see all the structures and this is the Schwalbe's line here, and this is the trabecular area and the ciliary recess on the iris. Here, the iris is a little bit forward that we don't see the ciliary recess. Here, part of the trabecular meshwork is not seen. Here, the iris is at the level of the Schwalbe's line, and even here, the Schwalbe's line is not seen. So you get what is visible. Everything is visible down to the ciliary recess, or nothing is visible on the extreme end, then you get a wide angle or a closed angle and grades in between. Here, you can see this is the iris, this is the ciliary recess, this is the trabecular meshwork. Here, nothing is seen. The angle is totally closed then you may meet any of these abnormal things you may find preferentiosynechia this is the normal fine iris strands while this is the widen the broad areas of preferentiosynechia so this is to differentiate between synechia which are widened areas of occlusion of the angle and the normal fine pigmented lines, the normal iris processes. Again, here we get the normal iris processes, 
and we get here a more widened areas of peripheral anterior sinica. The second is new vessels. Sometimes we see vessels in the angle and we have to differentiate between a normal vessel that can be seen in the angle and abnormal vessels. To know the normal vessel, let's see the anatomy again. We have a group of anterior ciliaries, the R7. We get two vessels coming from one of the four recti, except the lateral rectus will give us one. These vessels run on the sclera before reaching the limbus, three millimeters, pierce the sclera inside the eye. And we have two long posterior ciliaries coming from behind. They penetrate the sclera, move between the sclera and the choroid, sclera and ciliary body, to the ciliary body itself. So here, you all are familiar with this section. You get here the cornea sclera, ciliary body, and as you see here, the iris is embedded in the middle of the anterior surface of the ciliary body. This is the anterior ciliary vessel. It is on the surface, running toward the limbus. Before reaching the limbus by three millimeters, it penetrates into the eye. And this is the long posterior ciliary running between sclera and ciliary body. They meet and make anastomosis to form the major arterial circle, which is located in the ciliary body at the root of the iris. From the major arterial circle, vessels run radially inside the iris toward the pupil. If this is the surface anatomy, this is the location of the major arterial circle. And these are the radial vessels running in the stroma of the iris. This is the drawing of the angle. You have here the iris. And this is the ciliary recess, and this is the scleral spear, and this is the trabecular meshwork. This is the location of the major arterial circle. It is embedded in the ciliary body. It is not visible. It runs circumferential like this. From this major arterial circle, we have these radial vessels running in the stroma of the iris toward the pupil. Now, we come to anormal vessels we may see. Sometimes, this part of the major arterial circle is not embedded, and it is on the surface like this. So if you see a major, a large vessel, oriented circumferentially in an area, this is part of the major arterial circle, and this is a normal. Again, these radial vessels sometimes one of these radial vessels or more is apparent. It's a large vessel. It runs directly radial. It does not branch. It's one of the normal vessels of the iris, but it's not covered with the stroma. And the third possibility, this major, this anterior ciliary vessel. Imagine that it didn't come here. It's a little bit forward here to reach to the canal, to the major arterial circle. So this part will be visible, one major vessel coming through the sclera toward the ciliary body, not branching, run radially. So these are the three possibilities of seeing a normal vessel in the angle. Part of the major arterial circle, or one of the radial vessels of the iris, or the anterior, surf, anterior ciliary is forwardly dis displaced. I want to show you this video. Here, we get a blood vessel. This is reddish. There's only one vessel seen here, almost at 12 o'clock position. This is the anterior ciliary vessel visible. So normal vessels are broad. They appear for a short segment. They do not extend anterior to the sclera spare. They do not arborize on the trabecular meshwork. This is the abnormal vessels. They arborize, they run diagonal. They can extend anterior to the scleral spare. 
if they are on the surface of the iris, they are diagonal, like here. Here, this is an angle which is opened, but still you can see very multiple fine lines, reddish in the angle. These are abnormal vascularization. The cornea is edematous, that's why the image is not that clear. But you can notice all these fine lines are arborizing blood vessels. These are abnormal vessels in the angle. The last thing is the amount of pigmentation in the angle. Normally, there is some pigments on the normal trabecular meshwork. But abnormal pigmentations can be found in exfoliation syndrome, heavy pigmentation. It used to be segmented in areas of the circumference. Our pigmentary glaucoma, it's a diffuse pigmentation all over.